to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Your body now. pain around the hand area the Lord is healing someone right now you came with severe pain severe pain in the name of Jesus Christ now I'll not take too much of your time I'm seeing a woman in a vision will be seated shortly but I'm seeing God is showing me someone one two three four five five years you're trusting god for the fruit of the womb who is that person five years if there's such a person please make sure that you fit this description let there be order in the house of god the lord is asking me to pray for that person who is that hmm. we are here for you come and do what you do we are here the woman i'm talking about is wearing blue you are wearing a blue dress set our heart please get something and so you will do what you do we need a move we need a move madam What's your name? Please, please stand up. I'm not. Hold on. Please, can you help her so that she doesn't. I'm going to pray for you. Don't just come out at random. Where are you from? Edo State. Who is Mercy? Mercy. What's your name? No. Hold on. I'm not talking about. I'm. Um, there's somebody called Mercy. I'm going to pray for you. Mercy, you are wearing blue. You are in, not up to... Who, is there someone like that? The Lord wants... Come, your life is about to change, my dear. What do you do? Can we have another mic? Is it, is it okay? This is what happens when you come to the house of God. What's your name, my dear? Mercy. Don't cry. Look at me. The Lord is saying I should tell you, remember not the former things nor consider the things of old in this season the lord is doing a new thing in your life and even in your family i stretch my hands by the god of heaven and i pray by the power of the holy spirit shift to a new level help her please shift to a new level in the name of jesus christ my sister give her the mic who is blessing i'm a wardrobe consultant uh -uh. i didn't say what do you do what's your name Blessing, Sarah Oyinkati. That's why I said, who is blessing? I want to pray for you. There is something the Lord wants to take out of your stomach. I hope you are not embarrassed. Huh? Because you have been crying and praying. And you had a dream. And part of your prayer was that you will meet me today. Is that true? Yes, sir. This is what you were praying about. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. It's not about me. Just like our father has taught us. We are only agents that make these things happen by the spirit. I want to pray for every one of you here. That you will, by this time, recharge 2022. In the name that is above all names. The power of God will come on one of you. And then that grace for fruitfulness will just rest. The conference says multiply. This is what the Lord is showing me. Don't mind me. Let me just do my crazy thing on the stage here. The power of God now. One of you in front. Right now. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. Among those who are standing here. 
that is the sign God is giving me for the healing power of Jesus Christ to flow to these people. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, in the name that is above all names, I decree and I declare from my left to my right, even by the leading of the Spirit, let there be supernatural healing. I don't care what the medical condition is. In the name that is above all names. Madam, is your husband here? Call him. Don't feel embarrassed, husband. I want to pray for you. This is not even about fruit of the womb. This is God lifting him. Who is, is wearing like ox blood? This is what I'm seeing. Is there someone like... You are her husband? What do you do, sir? Business. No, just hold them. Don't give them the mic. If you give them the mic, they won't give you back. Well, you do business. Do you believe in Jesus? One, two, three. Count three months from today. You will come and stand on this altar. The way God will change your life. It will surprise you. And as I'm speaking to him by the spirit, I declare over everyone here. Everything keeping you in the same position. By prophecy, we push you into the next level. We push you into the next level. We push you into the next level. No power in existence will stop you from making progress. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I speak to you and your wife as the Lord has revealed to me. In the name of Jesus. Madam, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Help her. That is the end of captivity. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every one of you standing here. Trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name that is above all names. I join my faith with your pastor, the angel over this house. And we prophesy to you. According to the time of life. Return with miracle children. According to the time of life, return with miracle children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Hallelujah. You're going to be seated. But the Lord is asking me to release the grace for speed. Truly, there is such a grace that can make people and bring acceleration dominion over time is real dominion you can have dominion over things but the zenith of dominion is dominion over time because the unit of destiny is time hallelujah i pray for you now please whether you are an usher or not you don't have to bring them out but just help them because people will begin to run as i pray this is a character of the administration of this grace. And so that there's no chaos. Father, over Global Impact Church, the centers connected and those who are following from around the world, there are men and women here in ministry, in business, who are trusting God for speed. I stand by the privilege of the election of grace and I stretch my hands over you. Global Impact Church, the membership, in the name of Jesus and everyone who has come to celebrate at this recharge conference, may the mantle and the grace for speed rest upon you. Take that grace now. Help them, please. Take that grace now. Please help this woman. Take that. Speed. 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 In business. Dominion over time. Dominion over time dominion over time i declare speed no delay speed 10 years help her help that woman help that woman please 10 years in one year 10 years in one year one year in one month 10 years in one year in the name of jesus hear me and every power that has tied you down so that you will not move forward by the power of the Holy Ghost, we command them destroyed now. We command them destroyed now. Speed in ministry, speed in business, speed in achievement.
Please open your mouth in one minute and receive it. Receive it as a prophetic word. Go ahead. The righteousness of faith speaks. Receive it. You came to church. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so. That here at Recharge Conference, I was ignited. Speed to my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please, thank you for your patience standing. I'd like you to join me. One more time for this session, honor the angel over his house and his precious wife, Pastor Yemi Davids. Thank you, sir. I do not take it for granted in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a few minutes. I just I will pray for you, but this is not the person I'm seeing. There's someone with the name Folorunsho. I just want to pray for you. If you're following online, you can indicate that you're following online or any of the centers. But the Lord is saying that death is averted for the person with this name, Folorunsho. We are ministers of life, and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit using this name as a point of contact to anyone here if there is any spirit following you to not let you rest until you go down to the grave we decree and declare by reason of this service this morning you part ways with death completely in the name of jesus my friend i pray for you may the lord show you mercy may he lift you may he honor you he will grant you the oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows in Jesus name God bless you good morning again hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I count it an honor one more time to be able to bring a final word from the Lord this service Luke chapter 19 please from verse 41 yesterday at my session we began to consider the fact that multiplication is part of the the indices for dominion that in giving the dominion mandate as revealed from genesis 1 and verse 28 it says be fruitful multiply so multiplication is a requirement for every believer and everything that god created I told you that in God's character, he does not bring harvests initially. Everything always comes as a seed alongside the grace for multiplication. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And we examine scriptures from the life of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and how that a sworn blessing came upon them that included multiplication. Every time God declared a blessing upon men, it was always captured in his pronunciations and his decrees the grace for multiplication amen this morning i just want to show us one key from scripture jesus wept over jerusalem and he said oh jerusalem jerusalem verse 42 he says if you had known even in this your day the things that make for your peace. This was the reason why he wept. Twice the Bible records that Jesus wept. The first was in John 11:35 at the grave of Lazarus. The Bible says Jesus wept. 
And they saw him weeping and said, oh, how he loved him. And then the second occasion, we find here Jesus weeping over the ignorance of men. Wept over Jerusalem and said, if only you have known this day, the things that make for your peace, the things that make for your wholeness, the things that make for your, your perfection. He says, but now they are hidden from your eyes. You now see the reason why Paul prayed a prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 over the church in Ephesus, bowing his knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says that he will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, amplified, says flooded with light, that you may know. Knowledge is very important in this kingdom. We rise up in this kingdom by revelation. I went up by revelation. Hallelujah. And so it is important that we, like spiritual archaeologists, continue to search for the keys. We call them mysteries. The mysteries that control results. Last time I was here, I spoke about the fact that God is a God of systems and that there is a name he is called Jesus the way the authorized methodology of the kingdom God's way of obtaining results it's not only important for us to desire results it is important for us to know how to obtain results are we together it says the labor of the fool weary yet every one of them because he does not know the road to the city Ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind so Paul teaching the church in Colossae in chapter 1 Colossians 1 and verse 9 he began to pray that they be filled with three dimensions of knowledge number one that they be filled with the knowledge of his will number two all the dimensions of wisdom and number three spiritual understanding are we blessed psalm 82 from verse 5 they know not the bible says neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said in spite of that tragedy i have said ye are gods and all not some of you are children of the most high the tragedy is in the next verse it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes light is very important john 1 5 it says and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not it is truly as far as your eyes can see not as far as is available as far as your eyes can see isaiah 60 and verse 1 arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i like to quote it all the time from amplified it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light we must pant after knowledge we must pant after knowledge knowledge and illumination that is enough to turn every night today a candlestick can bring light but not enough to make nights to become day the little phone on the little light on your phone may give you some level of illumination but not enough to turn your night to day the secret of job's exploit is found in job chapter 29 the first four or five verses it says oh that i was in the days of my youth he began to contemplate at the height of his predicament he says when the secrets of the lord were upon my tabernacle he had two levels of light there was light that shined upon his head and there was light that shined on his feet the light that shines on your head is for illumination the light that shines on your feet is for direction Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to your feet means guidance. A light to your path means direction. 
Direction tells you where to go. Guidance tells you how to get there. Sometimes you may not receive more than two or three directions in a year, but you need guidance every day. Knowing where you are going does not mean you will get there. You can tell me, open the door, turn left. That's direction. But if you tell me as you go down, you will meet a staircase. There is a skill to step in down. That is guidance. The Bible says the word of God sustains the ability to both direct and guide. Are we together? An attack on your word life. An attack on your passion for spiritual illumination. An attack on your appetite for knowledge is a real attack. No matter what else you have, you are not secured if it did not come by knowledge. Knowledge is what gives security. Isaiah 33, that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. You will fear your result if it came by luck. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Are we blessed this morning? And so I want to show us just one key by the Spirit of the Lord and we pray that will help us multiply results in our lives. There is a reason why people experience certain levels of liftings and they plateau at a level in ministry, in business, and never seem to rise further. Look. Let's start with Matthew. Matthew 14. Three scriptures very quickly. Matthew chapter 14 from verse 13. Matthew 14 and verse 13. The Bible says Jesus departed by ship into a desert place. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot into the cities. And when Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, the Bible says he was moved with compassion towards them. He healed their sick. Next verse. When it was evening, the disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Next verse. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. This is a prophetic word from someone. You don't need to leave Jesus for your needs to be met. It is always in his presence. The disciples were saying, this godliness is distracting your people from eating. Allow them to leave you for a while and go and look for food. And Jesus said, it doesn't work so. If my presence cannot give them this lifting, if, if my presence cannot supply food, then it cannot be found anywhere. This is a word of caution. This is not my word. But it's already a prophetic word for someone. Because many times the devil will try to negotiate and say, you know what? Paying attention to Jesus is making you lose out in life. Why don't you leave him temporary? Time is gone. This was a discussion that happened in the night. Time is gone. You started this journey when you were 10 years. Now you are 40. It looks like there's nothing to show for it. You are 50. There's not, why don't you leave Jesus? And Jesus says, no. They need not go. Right in my presence, I will supply their needs. If it's not in your presence, if it's not from your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. Whatever would require you leaving Jesus to have it is not needed for your destiny. I assure you, no matter how glittering and how flamboyant it looks, everything that will require you leaving his presence, I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here Worshipping all of the days of my life. I'll be here serving you all of the days of my life. I'll be here serving you 
all of the days of my life. It's a commitment. I'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life. I'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Martha, Martha, you are worried and so frustrated about many things because you have been mentored into thinking it is when you leave his presence that you find these things. No. In his presence only, there is fullness of joy. And even the pleasure that you seek is found at his right hand. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So let's continue our discussion. I believe that was a word for someone. Please give us the scripture. Let's, let's read on. Luke, Matthew 14, it says, But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. 17, And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. 18, Hallelujah. And Jesus says, Bring them hither to me. Jesus is teaching us here the secret of multiplication. I thought the secret of multiplication was to give thanks alone. Until one time I was studying and the Lord told me, no, the secret of multiplication is not to give thanks. The first secret of multiplication is surrendering everything you have first. You don't give thanks with it in your hands. You give thanks when it's in his hands. Bring them hither to me. Bring your financial limitation to me. Bring the lack of influence to me. You do not have the power to multiply it. And the Bible says, 19. Are we learning something this morning? And he commanded the multitude to sit down. That is the first key to multiplication. You must find rest as proof that you trust me. It's not merely just saying, I thank you in anxiety. Anxiety is sin. Number one, surrender your pain and everything to me. Put them in that alabaster box. Don't just bring pleasant things. Put your pain, put your disappointment, put everything at the alabaster box. You don't break it at my feet standing. He said, sit down. If you don't have the patience to sit down, you will not eat bread from the master. I know you are in a hurry because time is gone, but find rest. Let it be that you trust me. God is speaking to someone. It's time to sit down. It is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. He gives his beloved sleep. He spent a whole chapter talking on worry. We live in a society that in an attempt to communicate responsibility, they end up promoting anxiety. People run from pillar to post. Woe betides a man who does not have the advantage of God's favor on his life. He will labor helter-skelter and only return with pain as a reward. The Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Are we together now? So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. How many of you know a hungry man is an angry man? You don't ask an angry man to sit down when he has not seen the bread. All kinds of complaints already. Insensitive Jesus. You wasted our time. Now is night. We have children. The master commands, sit down. Someone is saying, Lord, I started a building project. It's not finished. I, I need to go around. I, I was told that there's someone I can meet and God is saying, sit down. Three hours will, with me will give you what a connection of 10 years cannot give you. I want you to know the value of his presence and the value of finding rest. There remaineth a rest for the Lord's people. Next verse. Are we learning the principles? 
So principle number one, learn to hand over everything. God does not say we should hand over only good things. You hand over everything. Your pain, your disappointment. I am the one. You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. By next week, this will be someone's song. That I'm the one. That you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. When people ask you, how did it happen? You will tell them, look, I know that I was diligent. But there is a part of this equation, I don't know who completed the gap. All I know is that I did my due diligence and God was introduced in the equation. From then, I don't know what happened. All I know, you see, you've heard me say that anything plus God is the answer he puts there. Anything plus God. There is no logic once God comes in. It is the answer he puts there. He can put five loaves, two fish plus God equals to feeding 5,000 men minus women and children alongside 12 baskets full. The Bible says, verse 19 please. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. Look what he did. He took the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed it. Some versions say he gave thanks. And he break it and gave the loaf to the disciples. Go and feed the multitudes. And as they went with thanksgiving, multiplication began to happen. Let me tell you this. Multiplication is always at the instance of genuine gratitude when you surrender everything to god when you find rest as a proof of your faith and trust in him the next thing is to begin to give thanks lord i thank you i thank you not god you gave me tea you gave me bread where is the jam to put on it uh -uh. i thank you that i have the hands to hold you know we live we live in a world where people are always conscious of what is left. Lord, you have done this. Thank you. We, we quickly breeze it. Lord, when will you bring this? And he says, is this your perception of my goodness? Even as humans, there are people you will give 10 naira, 100 naira. And the way they tell you thank you, you feel, you feel very evil for giving them 100 naira. You are compelled to step up that amount because that level of gratitude outweighs the benevolence. It's like a debt you owe them again. Have you blessed someone and then he tells you 100 naira, he tells you thanks. 10,000, he says thanks. 100,000, he says thanks. 1 million, he says thanks. Is that a wise man? It took different levels of effort to produce that amount. And the possibilities that those amounts can produce are not the same. Your thanksgiving is not complete until the benevolent person, the one who gave that thanks, perceives that you are grateful. Your thanksgiving is not as you want. You keep thanking and looking at the person you are thanking until he perceives that your thanks matches his benevolence. You should not stop. So when you come to God for giving you life, for giving you grace, for giving you children, for giving you this, you've been complaining about a two-bedroom flat and say, Lord, thanks in one minute. And you use three hours to complain. He says, wow. But someone will hold a loaf of bread and keep it down and roll and almost roll on the bread. And God says, you are doing this for bread. You are ready for the next level. And he opens him up multiplication proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 it says trust in the lord with all your heart is the word bata it means throw yourself and expect him to hold you trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding verse verse 6 is the secret in all your ways acknowledge him one of the principal ways of Acknowledging God is giving thanks. To acknowledge means to ascribe worth. To acknowledge means to give the person an impression of value and usefulness. 
Are we learning something this morning? In all your ways, acknowledge him. It's one of the mysteries in the kingdom that every time you meet a wall in your life, every time you come before an obstacle, every time you feel limited at the current level, stop talking about the limitation. Turn back and draw from the archives of what God did yesterday. The only way to move forward is to look back and say, Father, thank you. When, when David stood before Goliath, he reached down to the archives of God's goodness and says, the God who delivered the bear and the lion to my hands, that same God. Many times we forget the things that God did yesterday and we stand before our desires and we keep yelling at heaven, are you not God? Don't bring shame to your name and so on and so forth. And then God is looking at us and wondering. But someone stands before God and says, Lord, I am grateful. I'm trusting God that my children will get admission. My first gratitude is that I have children. I never had to wait one day for a child. Lord, I thank you. And whilst you are thanking God, he says, don't talk about the admission issue again. It was covered already in your praise. That you acknowledge me. Your praise can spread wide enough to cover your requests. Are we blessed? First it was fragrance. Listen. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. That is how. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy of praise. So by that formula. Shall I be saved? I will call upon him. Not by saying God come and help me. I will call upon him by praising him for what he did yesterday. And I will use it as his secret arsenal to be saved from my enemies. To triumph from one level of grace to the other. Jesus multiplied loaf by giving thanks to the father. Watch this. I wish I had time. Did you know that even when he went to the tomb of Lazarus. When you read John 11 from verse 35 down to 45, you will find out that after weeping, he went to the tomb and he said, Father, I give thanks. So that is how the grave opens. God is speaking to someone. You are trusting God for resurrection of things that died in your life. It has to first be alive before it multiplies. But there are times that it's already dead. Your first assignment is to bring it back to life before multiplication. The same secret that brings resurrection is the same secret that brings multiplication. Thanks. Thanks. Lord, I thank you. If you thank God as much as you pray and petition God over your request, you will not need to bring many, many requests again. Father, thank you. From morning till night. Can you fast and pray and your prayer project is just thanksgiving? Lord, I want to thank you. You count your blessings. You name them one by one. And the writer says it will surprise you. If you are not surprised, you are not done counting. Keep counting. Keep counting. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, oh, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Gratitude and thanksgiving. In Luke chapter 17, we'll not turn there for the sake of time, Luke chapter 17. From verse 19, the Bible talks about 10 lepers. Are we Bible students? The Bible talks about Jesus who was passing and he met 10 lepers. And they beckoned on him to have mercy upon them and he showed them mercy. He said, stand up, go show yourself to the priest. The Bible says, as they went, suddenly they found out that the signs and the symptoms of leprosy had gone. But in the midst of that, the people went their way, showed themselves to the priest as the Lord demanded and left. But there was one person 
Pay attention. There was one person who returned back. It's amazing that Jesus was in a hurry passing. But then he returned back. And when he did return back, listen carefully. When he returned back, he met, the one, he met Jesus standing there. Jesus was passing. And waiting for gratitude, he remained there. And when he came, he said, were there not ten of you? What suddenly happened to the nine? And he says, since you have returned, go your way, you are cleansed. To be cleansed means that from the blood you may be healed. But to be cleansed means that wholeness comes back to your hand. Multiplication. Multiplication. At the instance of genuine heartfelt gratitude. Let me show you two scriptures and then we pray. Psalm 50 verse 23. Psalm 50 and verse 23. Psalm 50 and verse 23. He said, Whoso offered praise glorified me, and to him that orders his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of the Lord. Whoso offered praise as a way of acknowledging me. As a way of saying thank you Lord for your faithfulness. As a way of saying thank you Lord for your goodness, your mercy. For all that you have done in my life. He says he brings glory to me. And as a result he will keep seeing my salvation. He will continue to see my salvation. There is no limit to a grateful man. Physically, naturally. Grateful people do not remain at the same level. Believe me. Grateful people always make advancement it's difficult to say no to a grateful person there are many of us who have received all kinds of helps and blessings from people from men of god from business colleagues from destiny helpers and many times we forget to acknowledge them until there is another need then we quickly send a five minutes text just saying god bless you Five minutes later, sir, just to remind you again that the rent issue is here. If you have to wait for a pastor's appreciation day or pastor's appreciation service to tell your pastor thank you, let me tell you, Thanksgiving is most powerful when there seems to be no occasion for it. When there is an occasion for it, it sounds very mechanical. It looks very mechanical. That one day for no reason, you come before your pastor and say, Sir, I just want to appreciate you. And usually you say, Oh, no, that's what is, is the... And insist. And say, Pastor, please hear me. Just to say thank you. This is a token of my gratitude to you and to your wife. I remember when I came to this church, I came confused. The only thing I had in my life was the wisdom to find this place. I knew nothing about the principles of life. But under your leadership, under your mentorship, look what God has done. I have come to say thank you. There are many members in this church, in this center, the good land, and across the entire centers. But I assure you, your thanksgiving, like, like a photographer, it will edge your face to the heart of your pastor. When he sees you, he will remember you. thanksgiving the key to multiplication but profitable thanksgiving like i've taught comes when you surrender when you find rest and then you begin to thank him thank him glorify him acknowledge him i'm not telling you what i don't do this i missed them already because you do not lay it to heart you started by giving god glory the company started increasing you started by acknowledging the Lord and then you got to a point where now God gave you a global voice and you said, Lord, you are stealing my stage. Get out of the way. Allow me have the moment to enjoy myself and he says, your will respected. When he steps out, just when people begin to look at you, you start going down in their presence and they say, so why did you call us? You called us to show and to learn a lesson from you that anything minus God is zero. Please hear me. 
The temptation to drive God out of our success is why many people do not last. Can you stand before the whole world and get down on your knees while they are watching you and say, Jesus, this is for you. Let the world see. I know that you worked hard. We know that you did this. It is unto the Lord, the praise of his majesty. For except the Lord builds a house. He didn't say it will not be built. He said they labor in vain. To labor in vain means to do what should produce results, but it still does not produce results. I made up my mind as a principle that I will be ever thankful, ever grateful. Psalms 30 and verse 11. Psalms 30 and verse 11. Pay attention. Psalms 30 and verse 11. Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. This is someone's prophecy. It says, and has put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Next verse. It says, to the end that my glory may sing praise unto thee and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks unto you. How long? How long? Global impact, how long? Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Ah. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Let it be a commitment from the depth of your heart. For as long as I am breathing, I will always sing it one more time. And I will not be silent. for your goodness for your mercy for your faithfulness as long the final key that supports thanksgiving is thoughtfulness you never become a grateful person until you can think the thoughtful are also the grateful when you think of his deliverance you think of the message of God the songwriter says when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for me my very soul shall shout hallelujah you must learn to be thoughtful. Shut your door and just sit down. Lord, this is what you have done. Thank you. You delivered me from a plane crash. Thank you. Yesterday, while we were celebrating Pastor Yemi and this that he had done, I sat back there and I saw the letter that he wrote and looking at his life and I began to think about my own life. I said, ah, but only a fool says there is no God. I still remember myself in one room. I still remember myself kneeling down before God in one room. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will return from a meeting drenched in rain. I will climb bike and return back and say, Lord, thank you for the honor and the privilege to even serve you, to be called your servant. Is an honor that nothing else can take. And I did not know that heaven, my gratitude was like a student at a defense, ready for a promotion. And God says, even in the rain, you can be grateful and you can be thankful. 
Let's go to the next level. May God always find you on your knees. May God always find you on your knees. That whatever it is that makes you too big to roll on the floor, sincerely before God, you pile all your CAC papers. I have 26 companies. Put them all on the ground and roll before them. And say, Lord, I'm doing this before you. And everybody looks at you and they feel, they feel embarrassed. And sometimes they may ask you like they ask David, why are you disgracing yourself? He said, I'm dancing before the God that took the kingdom from your father and gave me. Because if he can take it from your father and give it to me, he can take it from me and give to another person. Oh, that if you will not lay it to heart to praise me, I can raise up stones. I can raise up stones. May my life never become a vacuum. May my space never, let it never be written in the space of my destiny. Empty. That is bishopric, let another take. Because you have not laid it to heart to thank him. This is a powerful word for many of us. This is why for one, two years now, your influence stagnated. Your results stagnated. It's not because you are backslidden. You suddenly forgot the euphoria of the applause of men brought you to a point where it's now embarrassing to go back to the same altar that lifted you drive any relationship out of your life that makes God secondary that begins to promote you above God tell them hold on thank you for this applause but let me tell you this I am what I am today because of the sure message of the God of David and with our hands lifted up we will worship our King and with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted up to the sky, and the world wonders why. We just tell them we love in our King. Oh, we just tell them. I have a few minutes. Before I pray for you, we are going to spend the next five minutes. I'm going to leave you alone with your creator. Please, cast your golden crown. I know that you are a veteran in business, you are a veteran in ministry. But for the next five minutes, I want to leave you here at Global Impact. I don't know whether it's a song you will sing. I don't know whether it's your tears that will do the singing. I don't know whether you will roll on the ground. But I want you to remember in one minute... The goodness and the faithfulness of God. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Go ahead and thank him. Don't be embarrassed. Let the world watch you worship him. That's how we rise in this kingdom. That's how we multiply. Oh, we acknowledge you, oh God. The doer of great things. Over Global Impact Church. Think about your life. Think about his lifting. When you didn't have a job. When you didn't have a spouse. When you didn't have a child. Majesty. Your majesty. Your grace has found me just as I am Empty handed but alive in your hands Majesty Cry before your maker Majesty 
majesty, majesty. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Forever I am helped by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Forever lifted by your love. In the presence of your majesty. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, in my life, be glorified. Be glorified. In this house, be glorified. Be glorified. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Go ahead. Don't be tired. You're not wasting your time. How can I be ashamed to tell the world you lifted me? I'll be here thanking you all of the days of my life. If God if God built this church, may he build your reputation. May he build your influence. May he build your business. May he build your ministry. May he build your family. May he build your children. The building started and it did not finish. If God was Alpha, Omega over this house, then I declare, if he has started as Alpha in your life, may he also be Omega. Every uncompleted project in your life, physical building, relationships, destiny, ministry, the grace for completion, the finisher's anointing, may it rest upon you now. The same way your pastor lived to see this project. You will never start anything and leave it halfway in death. Now I speak to everything that has refused to grow. In the name of Jesus, one of the characteristics of living things is that they grow. Whatever has refused to grow, I bow my knees before this altar and I command it, grow now. Grow now. For every door that needs to be opened, every gate for your next level, I speak to it, Ephata, be opened now. Ephata, be opened now. Gates of influence, be opened now. Gates of speed, be open now. Gates of abundance, be open now. Please rise up on your feet. May it never be said you had a better yesterday. And hear me, please. For everyone who has contributed in partnership with the Holy Spirit to make this project a reality. I cannot but speak over your life. Everyone, I know that people have labored in prayer. People have sown seeds and are still sowing seeds. 
into this project. I stand in faith with Pastor Yemi Davids and his dear wife, the leadership, and in the name of Jesus, under this corporate anointing, we declare that hand that gave is the hand that will hold what multiplies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, from today and forever, may this church and everyone connected to this grace now and as many as the Lord will bring everything in and around your life begins to multiply exponential multiplication that the testimonies that will begin to be shared from this altar will be testimonies of strange multiplication in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I have two minutes and I'm off the stage. There are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying, Apostle, I desire multiplication, but I'm not even alive to myself. I know that whilst attending this conference, I have heard speaker after speaker, but I know that I need Jesus Christ. I do not want to just get things and at the end of my life lose my soul. You came to church. And those who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but for some reason my life has gone haywire. I do not want this conference to end without my life experiencing order. Wherever you are, we just have one minute for you. We have to work with time. Please, wherever you are, I'm going to count one to five. Jesus is speaking to you. While we were worshiping for you, he was saying the only way you will tell me thank you is to hand over your entire life to my influence. Wherever you are, as I count one to five, finally win that war. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain. These two categories of people, I'd like you to come and stand in front. If you are coming, run quickly. One, global impact. Are we celebrating salvation? Two, run to Jesus. Don't allow anybody to stop you. I give you my heart, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. Keep coming, don't be ashamed. I live for you alone, every breath that I take. Please don't kneel because of space. Have your way. Global impact starts with global harvest. Come. And you who are following from any nation, any center, watching or will be watching by way of internet, television, hear the word of the Lord. He's calling you to start a rich and a meaningful relationship. From where you are, you can begin a genuine relationship with Jesus. The Bible declares that if our hope is only in this life, it says we are of all men most miserable. You are here, you are still saying, Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Join them. If you are not sure, it's a sign that you are not saved. I appreciate all of you, my dear brothers and sisters. It's an honor to stand on behalf of Pastor Yemi Davids to receive you and welcome you to the kingdom and then to this family of faith. Now, very quickly, I want to lead you to make this noble decision. Look up, please, everybody. Let me have your attention. The Bible says, ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. That after this encounter, you will never forget this day. You will write this day and for the rest of your life, you will know and you will believe from your heart that you made Jesus Lord. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Please lift your right hand high to the heavens. And I want you to say this after me. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus, the King and the Savior is here. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. He's here for you. Say, Lord Jesus. I have heard your word. I believe that you are Savior. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for my justification right now. I declare that Jesus is my Savior, 
is my Lord, is my King. I declare that I am a recipient of eternal life into my spirit. The power of sin, the power of Satan, the power of hell and the grave is broken over my life. I receive the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I declare that from today till forever, I am a child of God. Amen. Keep those hands lifted. Father, we thank you for these ones. You have brought them by your spirit. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that you are partakers of the life of God. And in the name of Jesus, I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. That you will be built, you will be established in righteousness until you become mighty vessels for the kingdom. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Now all of you, please listen to this instruction. Okay, now this is what will happen. You will find a pastor waving his hands. There's another one, both of them. Please, you can follow either this man or this man as we celebrate you. Just follow obediently to wherever they take you. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they go. Celebrate them, please. Global Harvest, is it the best you can do? Celebrate salvation. Hallelujah. Pastor, one more time. I am truly, truly grateful. I want to thank you. Thank your family of faith and the entire leadership for the honor to come and be a blessing at this conference. The Lord bless you. And again, congratulations for this mighty work. Let it be from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.